Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! The following video will contain spoilers from the Legends of Tomorrow season finale episode titled Legendary. So if you don't want anything spoiled or ruined for you, stop watching now! For everybody else that's here, hey guys, Dave here. Okay, holy crap. I watched the episode last night, I watched it again this morning just so I can catch up on all the little things. Whoo! This was some major stuff right here. Okay. Starts off that the team returned back uh, to Star City, but in May 2016. And it looks like, you know, Rip's getting ready to drop everybody off. They don't really want to, but it turns out that Rip was just a hologram projected out to trick them into all getting off the ship. So, while the team's getting ready to try to go back to their lives, there are some pretty devastating things that happen. It cuts right also into the uh, latest episode of Arrow, uh, which major things going on with Damien Dark and Sarah getting the bad news about what happened to Laurel. And this is just heartbreaking to see her having to go through this. And believe me, that's going to come back up here in a bit. That's why I picked the little intro card thing here. I thought it was kind of fitting. But, um, yeah. Martin Stein decides to go back into uh, a relaxing time with his wife, answering trivia pursuit questions thanks to him actually interfering with the timeline. Uh, Jack's no sign that he's ready to do anything one way or the other. Uh, Mick Rory is trying to get back into the swing of things with someone else wielding the Captain Cold Gun. I can only assume this might be Chillblane. Who knows? We'll have to see in a future episode. But uh, it turns out that uh, Ray Palmer becomes the, the getaway driver. They get away to talk. And it uh, looks like they're trying to keep an eye out for each other, but decide that they've got better things that they got to be doing, which is taking out Savage. So, Rip gets a distress call both from Ray and Professor Stein to try to get them summoned there. They meet up at the point where they did before. Sarah is very determined. And once they finally get on the ship, she decks him again. Holds a knife through his throat and says, You knew that Laura was going to die. Take me back so I can fix this. And he's just flat out refusing. He can't. So he eventually gives the little flash thing to knock her out, thanks to a distraction from Ray. He didn't know, though. She's going to go to sleep it off. So, now they're trying to figure out where the heck Savage would be. Meanwhile, in 1944, during World War II in France, Kendra manages to get away from uh, Vandal and runs into what we can only assume is Sergeant Rock. A very young-looking Sergeant Rock. I was expecting a little more grizzled guy from Easy Company, but, well, Kendra recognizes the helmet, writes a little note, puts it in there, and he is taken out by Vandal Savage. She's knocked out by him, and while the crew's trying to figure out where the heck to go, it turns out that it uh, looks like because Rock was never meant to die that way, the, his helmet got moved around. Rip discovers the note, finds the, where they're going. Meanwhile, Sarah wakes up, and we find out some pretty interesting revelations here. <sighs> Brace yourself. Apparently, the reason why the uh, team was gathered in 20, January 2016 and brought back in May is because according to the original timeline Damien Dark was meant to kill not only Laurel Lance but Sarah and Quentin Lance. So according to Mark Guggenheim who is executive producer and writer for both Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow Laurel dying is the best case scenario in that universe according to him. I don't accept a universe where Laurel Lance dying the way she did is a good thing. And trust me, you're going to hear more about it, Mark. I've been hearing that apparently I'm becoming a very vocal person that others are gravitating toward. And I'm going to use that and you're going to hear about it. But I digress. Not happy about it. Moving on. They find out what's going on also that uh, apparently when they uh, head to 1944, they deal with Nazis carrying a meteor of nth metal from Thanagar. We also find out from uh, from Vandal telling us thing that apparently the idea is that the nth metal isn't just meteorite power, but it's it's not the source of their powers, but also it's supposed to be technology from the planet Thanagar. Pretty impressive, I'd have to say. So the idea is if they can create a ritual detonating these uh, three different meteors then it would actually reset time back to when he was back in ancient you know, Egypt and he's going to rewrite time itself and become master. So, 
The guys managed to go, try to uh, stop him in 1944. Things look a little bit unsuccessful, unfortunately. We finally get to answer the, qu uh, the question about whether or not they're going to stop nerfing Firestorm. While rescuing Carter and Kendra, Firestorm actually transmutes a Nazi's rifle into dust. But he's that's kind of a bit of a shock to him. It's something he's going to have to work at here. While they're trying to get away, Kendra gets zapped and taken by Savage once again. But now that they got Carter, at least, and they're trying to figure out where to go from there. Uh, Jax is trying to work with Professor Stein to get the transmutation thing going on again, but it's not quite what it is. And I was right. Transmutation is how they create the freaking uh, uniform and that. So I knew that was going to be possible, but they need to address that. They're not even using the quantum splicer anymore, but it just shows up as part of the uniform. Come on! But it looks like they're trying to set that up as something that they can play with in Season 2. But at least they finally gave it to him. <sighs> but we get to address about what the whole deal with Thanagar is. And uh, apparently what's going on here. So somehow Professor Stein figuring out the whole third time is the charm thing. And where he gets the information about Thanagar and planetary alignments must have happened off screen. Because I don't remember anyone else mentioning where are these hawk the world of the Hawkmen come from and where he knows what their alignments. So, that's something. Anyway, what happens next is he manages to calculate that there's three different time periods that Earth will be closest to Thanagar, and with an alignment it would actually create a ripple effect. So, 1958, uh, 1975, and 2021 will be the places where Earth is closest to an alignment with uh, Thanagar. So, by Vandal setting off these things with uh, the blood of Kendra and Carter in three different time zones, they'll effectively create a paradox wiping history and resetting it back to the time of the original meteorite, which is back in ancient, uh, Egypt. So, the idea is now to break into three teams and realizing that apparently not only is the meteorite the source of his power, but items touched by it and Carter and Kendra are the only ones that can hurt him, so not only does it give him his powers, but also makes him vulnerable. So they have to wait for him to activate all three meteors to set to a critical mass explosion, and that'll make Savage vulnerable so anyone can kill him. So, three different teams, three different time periods, which I also notice correlates to transitional periods. Uh, a lot of people would say that 1958 is the time when it transformed from the Golden Age of comic books to the Silver Age. 1975 was a time when people refer to that as the Silver Age to the Bronze Age. And 2021 is just an arbitrary thing in the future that they kind of picked, so I can only imagine what's going to happen from there. Uh, I think 2021 is the last current DC Marvel movie that's lined up, so I don't know what's going on. Anyway. So, two teams, or three teams are either to, to hit them. So we've got Adam and Heat Wave in 1958, having to deal with the mutated hawk you know, monsters and Savage there. 1975, we got Firestorm and White Canary, which is really sad to me because if you remember that episode where they were dealing with a nuke, Damien Dark was there. So, quite literally, if they wanted to change the future, Sarah could have gone to take on Damien Dark so that none of that would have ever happened and changed it, but she was focused on the mission and doing Savage instead. I'm sorry, that was sad. That was just sad. But 2021, we got Rip and the Hawks to take on them. So I managed to get Kendra out of there. A lot of action going on. It's very satisfying to see Heat Wave roast Savage like a marshmallow. Kendra sticks to Savage quite literally. And <laughs> uh, Mike Canary finishes Savage off with breakneck speed. Yes, I had to make the pun. I had to make the pun. Ugh. But the mission, the things are going critical. Adam shrinks the meteor in 58, so it just goes a poof. Uh, we've got uh, Jax managing to uh, transmute the element into water in 1975, and in 2021, unfortunately, radiation doesn't allow Firestorm to transmute it, and Adam can't shrink it because he's out of power. So it's up to Rip and the Wave Rider to sacrifice himself, going on a collision course toward the sun, ready to die. He has a vision of his wife and son, and then he wakes up from it. Gideon says, I'm not ready to die. He's like, yeah, me neither. So to divert all power, we're going to make one last time jump and just dump this thing in there, which I thought he was going to do anyway. 
So, dumps it in there, comes back 20 minutes before it all happens, the wave rider is in shambles, and now he's getting ready, to, he takes the crew back to uh, 2016 for the most part, but he also stops over at 2013, so that Mick can actually say something that needed to be said to Captain Cold in 2013, before the particle accelerator went off, and before, you know, they got the cold gun and became Captain Cold, so that was really touching, and it was it was uh, we've seen so many of the characters grow and change and mick has been an interesting one i mean people were ready to write him off but he came back pretty strong and i you know it's been a transformation and he's definitely one of the more interesting people on the show so that's cool so the crew gather they're ready to do their thing again i was swear i was i had expecting Jax to slip uh, professor stein a mickey and drag him to the rendezvous point they go to meet up. The Hawks say, unfortunately, we're going to try to make our lives here. So, But I understand that. Sierra, I know I wrote a little song saying, please come back for season two. You're more than likely not going to, but hopefully we can get a cameo out of you guys. So, fingers crossed there. Uh, but before the sh they uh, managed to mount the ship, explosion heard, and the wave rider, looking very damaged, comes crashing down at their site. And a strange man in a hood and cape comes walking out. Uh, asking if this is May 2016, uh, alerting that apparently Mick Rory told him to come there and to warn them not to get on that ship or they will die. And he announced himself as Rex Tyler, our man of the Justice Society of America. Well, he didn't say our man, but I know who he is. The thing is, he looks like Rick Tyler, uh, our man's son, who also adapts the uh, thing about there. So, I guess they decided not to go with the yellow and black for some reason, but I thought it would be a little good look. But he looks pretty cool here, so why not? So that sets things up as a cliffhanger for season one, coming up into season two. So now we know who the gentleman is from Suits is going to be playing. That's going to be kind of cool. What do I think overall about it? I think it's good overall, uh, but I hate to say this, guys, but... Given what's going on, I may have to boycott watching Legend of Tomorrow Season 2 uh, as long as Mark Guggenheim has anything to do with it. Uh, it's, I, yes, he's done some writing and stuff, uh, but and you know, he did do some writing on the Justice Society of America, but I feel like a part of him is saying that he accepts that ratings are going to take a hit from Arrow, and that's an acceptable loss. But look, we're all getting something brand new and shiny. We're getting new characters over here in Legend of Tomorrow. Don't pay attention to the, the, the dead woman over here in the, the Dominatrix outfit. No, look over here. We've got new characters, and I wrote them before. These are going to be great stories, I swear. And as long as you watch over here, that doesn't matter. She's a superhero in any way. She died. Isn't that what heroes do? One life for many? That's a good thing, right? I can't accept that. I really cannot accept that. I haven't made up my mind about it. I'm doing a full boycott yet. and Trust me, you're going to be hearing more about that in an upcoming video. So, I like this series, but to be honest, given the climactic feel that it was building up for just last episode, it was a bit of a letdown in this one. I mean, it was good, but it's just didn't have that same drive or finish that I was expecting. I was honestly expecting a bit better, and you killed Vandal Savage three different times at three different time periods. That alone is going to alter the whole timeline again! I wouldn't be surprised, since the guys made appearances in 19-freaking-44, maybe, maybe the Legends were the inspiration for the Justice Society now. I wouldn't be surprised. A red and blue guy who appeared to be a man of steel flying around fighting Nazis? Huh. You know, a Mick Rory shooting his freaking gun. A regular firebrand, if you will. It's... Uh... And of course, the Hawkman and the Hawk Girl were sighted beyond enemy lines now as well, so... I, I like it, but it just... the. The climax didn't feel like it was there. It was a lot of build-up, and I was hoping for more, but it's still a lot of confusing things. How did Stein find out about the Thanagarian alignment? How did... I mean, just... What effects does this have on the timeline now? 
And when Vandal Savage died, there was a burst of energy that was released in 2021 that could set off a brand new line of metahumans or another reaction. All the life energy that was inside him from killing Kendra and Carter, that had to create something, and yet it hasn't happened yet because it's in 2021. So what is going to result from that? It answers, it, there's a lot of questions, and my curiosity is interested in checking it out, but it's like a bad comic book cover. For the Justice Society of America and the Legends of Tomorrow to live on, Black Canary has to die. If it were in a better writer's hands, if it was in something that had a good plan for it, I could accept that, but it's, since Mark said that the choice was arbitrary, that they didn't even know who was going to die in Arrow Season 4 at the beginning when they made that little teaser, and then they painted themselves into a corner and he said, Ah, uh, Laurel! It was an arbitrary choice. Laurel deserves better than that. And saying that it's a fixed point in time in the timeline and that Laurel dying is the best case scenario we had is in covering his own ass, in my humble opinion. But I digress. What do you guys think of this episode? Was it a good ending? Are you looking forward to seeing more of it? Will you boycott it? Because if that means that you accept what Mark Guggenheim has done in the name of Arrow. So let me know what you guys think. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. Pass this bad boy around. And until next time, Dave signing off. Peace. Yum yum.